How's it going everybody? Thank you for stopping by. We're going to go ahead and work on beginning the the next portion of our MPLS Layer 3 VPN section. And we're going to go and migrate to the IPv6 variation of labs. Now this is going to be a continuation of the existing uh, configuration and stuff like that. And what the goal is to do is we're going to go step by step migration and add, or I should say integration, not migration. We're not moving away from, we're adding to. We're going to integrate IPv6 into the existing environment. Now, the first thing we have to do, and at the top of your screen here, we have a list of things that we're going to go do, just like we did with IPv4. We have to do the same thing with IPv6. So the first thing we're going to go do is we're going to add support for IPv6 inside of the VRFs. So we'll go underneath the individual VRFs. We'll go ahead and add IPv6 support. So add, we'll turn on the address family IPv6 for the individual VRFs. That'll be this all of this video. And what I'm going to do as well, after we've got that done, is I'm going to jump on the customer edge routers and the PE routers that are facing those particular customer edges. And I'm going to add in the IPv6 addressing, because currently that's not there. And I want to show you some of the behind the scenes stuff that happens and not just have it pre-configured and go, ta-da! I'm going to go and configure everything. So you guys can see all the details behind that. Because that's pretty much what we've done so far. We've gone through, we've configured everything that we need to. Then once we do that, then we're going to move into the route reflector setup in another video. So all these are individual videos if you hadn't figured that already. So we're going to go and uh, configure the route reflectors to support IPv6 down to the, the PE routers. And then configure the PE routers to support IPv6 as well. And then once that's done, then we'll be able to start moving into the rest of our configuration. We'll start off with BGP, then move into RIP, ISIS, OSPF, EIGRP, and then static routing. Mm -hmm. By the time we're all said and done with this, this will be the core constructs of what you need to know in terms of how to get IPv6 as a PE2C routing, or I should say IPv6 addressed uh, addressing to use the writing protocols for the IPv6 address families and get all that type of stuff working. So that is the goal that we're going to go through and get operational. So let's go ahead and kick off the, the process by going, pulling up the command line. And we're going to go and start on the PE routers and get them squared away with the VRF config. So we'll start on CSR1. And if we Let's go and end and do a show run, show run VRF. You'll see that for VRF C1, we had the, um, go back to the top here. We have IPv6 is actually enabled by default, or um, is already enabled. And one thing that's interesting about this situation here, if we scroll back up here, you'll notice that the route target uh, policies, the imports and the exports, the way that they're configured is they're going to allow traffic in for both address families at the same time. We're not configuring the route target processes underneath the individual address families. So whatever we've configured here will apply to IPv4 and IPv6. So let's go ahead and jump over to CSR6, show run VRF, and I have to go and add IPv6 support for VRF definition C1. So I'll type in VRF definition C1, address family IPv6, and uh, unicast and then there we have it so now we've enabled ipv6 support for the vrf then we're going to go over to xrv9 and do the exact same thing so we're gonna once we log in show run vrf we're going to see that this is all squared away for ipv4 we just need to add ipv6 support so we're going to go to global config vrf c1 and then we're going to type in address family IPv6 unicast. And we're going to drag and drop these commands in like so. We're going to do a quick show config to validate the config and then commit the config and do show run VRF. And that's it. So now we have IPv4 and IPv6 support for the VRFs. And that's exactly where we want to be. So now that we've done all that, 
we can go go now to the individual configs and what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to slightly modify the IP addressing a little bit so that we're going to see an addition of the IPv6 address. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to come in here. I'm going to hit the enter key and I'm going to type in 101 colon 6 colon 15 colon colon slash 64. And that's all I had to type in. So I'm just going to be reutilizing the uh, the IPv6 addressing. I'll come into the same thing here. And be 101 colon 9 colon 14 colon colon slash 64. And then we'll bring this down just a little bit. And then we're going to go up here to the connection between CSR1 and, C and R13. Do this one as well. 101 colon 1 colon 13 colon colon slash 64 and there we have it so that's all of the IP addressing so now what I get to go do is pull the command line back up and I get to go to those individual nodes see on CSR 6 show run interface gig 3 I'm gonna go to gig 3 so I have an IPv6 address is gonna be 101 colon 6 colon 15 colon colon 6 or uh, 6 slash 64 and there we have it then I go over to R15 let's go to global config and we're going to type in interface gig 0 slash 0 IPv6 address is going to be 101 colon 6 colon 15 colon colon 15 slash 64 there we have it then we're going to type in interface loopback 0, IPv6 address, in this case here is going to be 10 colon 1 colon 15 colon colon 15 slash 64. I could go a shorter uh, address range, but that's good enough for right now. And do show IPv6 interface brief. And there we have it. So we have all of our addressing completed there, and we're all squared away. Now if I go to ping... 101 colon 6 colon 15 colon colon 6 I'm pinging right I'm, I'm pinging hard and I'm not getting anywhere any ideas as to why it's not working so I'm gonna cue the Jeopardy theme music right well the reason why it's not working is we haven't we neglected to do one major thing and that's the IPv6 unicast routing on R15 and the IPv6 unicast routing on our on CSR6. So let's try that one more time on R15. Let's jump out of global config. Try to do that ping again. And guess what happens? The ping goes right away. So unless you have IPv6 unicast routing enabled, the ping will never work. So keep that in mind as you're going through your configurations. So we're gonna do We'll go to CSR1 and R13 and get that one knocked out real quick. Remember IPv6 unicast routing. And then interface gig 3 IPv6 address is going to be 101 colon 1 colon 13 colon colon 1 slash 64. We're going to go to R13. IPv6 unicast routing. Interface gig 0 slash 0. IPv6 address is 101 colon 1 colon 13 colon colon 13 slash 64 and then interface loopback 0 IPv6 address is 10 colon 1 colon 13 colon colon 13 slash 64 and then if I jump out of global config and I ping 101 colon 1 colon 13 colon colon 1 I ping now let me ask you guys a question real quick what happens when I go on CSR1 to ping R13, what will happen there? Will there be any significant change? No, I'll just have to ping VRF C1 and 101 colon 1 colon 13 colon 13. Colon 13, I should say. And I can ping it, but you have to specify the VRF. Address family doesn't determine whether it's VRF aware. The VRF determines whether it's VRF aware and it supports both IPv4 and IPv6. Just keep that in mind. So we're going to go down to XRV9 now. Same process as before. Uh, let me 
make sure that there's nothing to commit. I'm going to type in interface gig 00002. One thing that we don't have to do here, IPv6 is enabled by default on XR. So we don't actually have to go in there and do anything. We just have to go configure what we need to configure, which is kind of nice. We're going to type in IPv6 address is going to be, in this case here, it's going to be 101 colon 9 colon 14 colon colon 9 slash 64. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to commit that config. I'm going to go down to R14. IPv6 unicast routing because we're on iOS. And then interface gig 0 slash 0. IPv6 address is going to be 101 colon 9 colon 14 colon colon 14 slash 64. And then interface loopback 0. IPv6 address of 10 colon 1 colon 14 colon colon 14 slash 64. Whoops. Let me do that. Now, because I have a typo or an error here on this interface, you'll notice how, uh, how I have two different IPv6 addresses now. These are two different subnets though, 14 and 143. So I'm actually gonna get rid of this one right here because I don't want him here. So there we have that. So now the real question is, can I ping 101 colon 1 colon, I'm sorry, 101 colon uh, 9 colon 14 colon 9. Well, I get to remember to put the second colon in there. And yes, I can ping. So what this basically proves is I have end-to-end -end reachability between the CEs and the PEs. So the directly attached attachment circuit, we're in good shape, everybody's happy and stuff like that. So we know that follow-on configurations should work without an issue. So with that being said, thanks everybody for stopping by and hanging out with me in this video. I hope it was informative and until next time guys, take it easy.